30 years on from our last visit to Sibirut, the main form of travel is still going by canoe, except most of them now have some form of outboard engine. Walking is also necessary, but with four and a half thousand millimeters of rain a year, it's always muddy and slippery. Wait, do it one at a time, guys. <laughs> you think? I'm going to bounce on the middle, you muppet. <laughs> We were aiming to get to the longhouse at Malagasat in the headwaters of the Savareka River. We arrived at nightfall and in the morning we woke with the animals as they started to feed on cut sections of sago palm trunk. One of the first tasks of the morning is cooking the sago. This is roasted in long packets made from the leaflets of the sago palm. As an unripe durian was being cut open, our host Teo Ogoi started to sing. After two nights, we headed off to find our best friend on the island, Potifar Tengatiti Serebetok, seen here with me 30 years ago. He's still well and strong, and we had great times together looking over old photographs and remembering good times and old friends. We planned with Potifar to go to the centre of the island, to the clearing where Jane and I used to live. This is where we lived for two years, conducting wildlife research. Getting to our old study area took a whole day of rough walking. It's hard to convey just how slippery Sibra it is. We took occasional well-earned rests and just enjoyed being in wonderful rainforest. We were concerned that our study area might have been logged or cleared, but at least the core of it is still full of fabulous 60 metre high diptrocarp trees. We overnighted in the only hut on the river. And during the evening, Potiphar told us one of his long animal stories. In the morning, Potiphar guided us just a short way upstream to our clearing. Well, what used to be the clearing, for it's now a pretty mature secondary forest. Yeah. We would never have found it on our own, and it was strange trying to remember how it looked. It was a long, hard slog back to Tengatiti's village. So once we were there, we were able to wash, dry off, and enjoy some food together. <laughs> it was desperately sad to leave everyone, but we'd arranged to meet some people up at the research station, run jointly by the Agricultural Institute of Bogor and the German Climate Center. The closest village to the research station is Politschioman. It's a peaceful place and is home for many of the staff that work at the station. The Sibrit Conservation Project has helped the village by installing an array of solar panels. This is connected to every house in the village, where the amount of electricity used is metered and then paid for. Into another canoe on another river on another journey this time to the Pungut Research Camp. Pungut is a delightful place with efficient camp management, researchers, team assistants and guides. But best of all, the cumulative efforts of everybody there means that some of the primates are now quite tame. This is the Joja leaf monkey, lives in monogamous groups. This is the gibbon that was the object of my PhD research. And this is the enigmatic Simakobu, a strange short-tailed leaf monkey. But the best views we had were of the Bokai macaque, which, like the other primates, is endemic to the islands. <laughs> And that was the end of our 10 days on Sibirut. A lot of memories, 
old friends, new friends and much learnt for later contemplation.